Let's take a quick second to look at the actual numbers. Since the depths of the global economic recession back 10 years ago in 2008, mm -hmm. uh, when it was pretty rough out there, we had like a seven month stretch where literally tens of thousands of jobs back in 08, 09, where jobs were lost. There was a point in time in that moment when there were people questioning whether the province of Ontario would ever produce cars again. And when you consider how historically important and currently important our auto sector is, that's just something that's remarkable to hear 10 years later. But 10 years later, because we chose as a government at that point in time to run a small deficit and to invest in our people and to invest in our infrastructure and to invest in a future where the economy could do well, we have, since the depths of that global recession, created about 800,000 new jobs. Those 800,000 jobs, north of 90% of those are full-time in the private sector and in, and in industries that have above average wages. So that's a really tremendous economic success story. At the same time, as you pointed out, we have GDP, we have economic growth. It doesn't just lead Canada, it leads the entire G7. We have now been below the national average in unemployment for 36 consecutive months, and our unemployment rate, which hovers around 5.5%, is at its lowest today, lower than any other point in time in the last 17 years. So it is a really, really good economic story that we have. We know that that economic success hasn't been universally felt by every area, physically, geographically, in the province, and it hasn't been felt by every individual or every family. That's why we see, in some cases, a bit of that rising inequality that I referenced a second ago. We want to close that gap. We want to make sure that we have social stability. That helps improve investor confidence. That helps strengthen our economy. We also have challenges because I'm sure your clients, your viewers would know, we have NAFTA, for example. We have an American, uh, an American a federal administration that is, like I'd say, dip diplomatically unpredictable. Uh, our premier has been engaging relentlessly. She's talked to 40 governors south of the border. She's met with senators, congresswomen and men. I've had a chance to be with her in some of those meetings. Yeah. I think our message is penetrating. We saw some success led by our federal government, but also because of our engagement just a few days ago after uh, President Trump had mused about slapping a 25% tariff on steel, which would have been disastrous for the province of Ontario, we see that Canada, and by extension Ontario, has gained an exemption from those tariffs. So we've had some success, but we know there are challenges that sit right in front of us. Rising inequality, rising protectionism, this is why our government has decided a very brief prorogation of the legislature from just yesterday till Monday, no sitting days lost, no bills that were on the order paper will die. We'll be able to come out with a, an agenda-setting throne speech on Monday that will outline how our government intends to continue to deal with those challenges I referenced a second ago so that we can continue to thrive as a province. Then we'll have a budget on March the 28th, and we'll see what's in that budget. But it, you know, I think it's, it's clear that we are going to, as a government, continue to invest in our people. We're going to continue to invest in our infrastructure. We're going to build that strong economy, create jobs, and have a strong quality of life for the people that we are very proud to represent.